Hey guys and welcome back to Getting to Blinky 4.0. This is actually a new thing that was not in the original Getting to Blinky series. We're actually going to use a little bit of Spice just to introduce you to the program because it's very useful, especially when you're getting started, especially when you don't have any parts on hand or you're just kind of trying to mess around without blowing anything up. Blowing stuff up also is good for your learning, but this is before that, right? So uh, I should also say up front, Spice is not meant to be, it's, it's a, you know, it's an assistive device. It is not meant to be, not meant to replace your legs, right? This is not a, uh, this is not the be all end all of circuits. So I'm going to be using LT Spice, which is a program that I really like. It's uh, native to Mac and Windows. You can also use Wine on Linux. Um, and I think it's really a, the best one out there. There's a lot of other ones, though, that are, are work great as well. Um, so what we're going to do is take the schematic that we were looking at before, and what we're going to do is just play around with this and try and get this so that it is uh, simulatable. Once it's simulatable, we'll be able to play with values, and then ultimately we're just going to look at what the output of uh, the output blink rate is, so that we can pick some values. Because I don't think we actually want to use these values. We might, but let's just check it out. It never hurts to do that kind of thing. So I have LT Spice here, ready to go. I'm going to. I already hit new. So if you don't, if you open up the program fresh, you have, you have to. Actually, I can just do that. So you have to hit new. It's kind of confusing because the, the the color of the screen doesn't change that much. All right. So I'm going to hit. Oh, oh, this is going to be interesting. My hotkeys are tied to the the thing here. All right. So F2 uh, gets you started here, and uh, we're going to actually drop in. It's under special functions, and then at the end, we should see. Oh, I thought it was there. Shoot. Uh, what's it under? It's under miscellaneous. There we go. Uh, and NE555, great. So I'm going to drop that one down there. And then I'm going to actually split screen here. So just in Windows, I just do split like that, uh, Windows left key to split. And then I'm going to hit escape. And now we're just going to set it up to match, oops, uh, alt backspace to undo. Some of the hot keys in LT Spice are a little bit wonky. You can change them around, and I might end up changing them around. But um, for now, we'll just keep plowing through. All right, so I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to uh, add a new component again. Uh, this time I'm just going to use a hotkey, R, add two resistors, and then there we go. And then hit C to add a capacitor. Great. And then G to add a ground. You need to have a ground. Let me zoom in a little bit here. You need to have a ground anytime you're using uh, spice. The circuit will not work without it, and that's a good thing because, well, everything has a, every circuit has a ground. But we can talk about that. Oops, see, man, I'm really used to the, uh, the uh, hotkeys here. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to hit uh, draw a line. Now you can draw directly through components. You see, it is drawing, uh, it drew it right through it. But now if I just double click to end. I'm sorry, hit escape to end rather. You see now it actually just it calculated, oh, it's on either side of a component. We just removed that internal wire there. Actually, I'm going to make this big again, I believe. Yeah. Simply because I want to get to here, component. I'm going to go back up one level. And then I'm going to go and add a voltage, which is really just a voltage source. Do that. Hit escape. I'm going to draw a wire here. Draw the wire to right here. Hit escape. Great. And then I'm going to add, let's see, another resistor and then an LED. So the component LED. Great. Now I also have to do, uh, for, for all of these components here, we actually have to add values, right? So we're just going to match the values that we have here. Right click. I'm going to say 1K. Now it will recognize K as a thousand, or seven zero K. And then same thing for the uh, for micro one U is one microfarad. You don't need to add the F at the end or the the ohm in the other one. One thing to note is that if you want to do uh, uh, which one is it? Shoot, there's M, and then there's Meg. M is milli. Meg is mega. You do have to call out meg. So if you wanted a 470 mega ohm resistor, you have to type 470 meg for it to be mega ohm. That is a very confusing uh, thing there. All right, so I'm going to hit uh, move. Uh, no, that's not it. 
Again, I can't use my hotkeys here, so I have to remember what it is. There we go. And then I need to go look up the, uh, the pinouts here because this silly schematic doesn't even list it as, uh, well, I can tell output's going to be pin 3, right? <laughs> oh, maybe it's, let's see. Oh, yeah, it is. Sorry. It's, so it's 1, 1, 2, 2. Yeah, so trigger. Let's see, trigger's going down to here, so we'll have to probably do a little bit of uh, refactoring here. Right? So we're gonna make output go over here. In fact, let's just drop that down like that. Hit escape, I'm gonna move these components down. go. And then the same thing here. And then hit G for another ground. And then draw a wire to that. So it's going to be drawn a little bit differently just because of, you see how they, we did the same thing. We moved all of these pins around. We can't do that necessarily in Spice, but we can do that uh, in KiCad, no problem. All right, so let's draw another wire here. Now you see that when it does make a connection, there's a little dot there, a little junction dot. So let's see, ground, we can just put another ground here. Okay. And then pin seven is the discharge. That's gonna be, pin seven has to go up and over there. So we're gonna do uh, this. There we go. And then finally, well not finally, uh, this one goes up here. You see there is no junction here. That's very critical. Make sure you don't cross those over. Five, we're going to leave. The CV, we're going to leave. And then six, we have to have that come around and attach to this one here. Uh, pin four also needs to go to power, so we'll... Actually, we can just... I think we can just label. We'll do that. Uh, so if we hit uh, F4 normally or label net, we can just call this... VCC just kind of clean stuff up here, right? So that one actually we can go and delete. We can hit delete here. Uh, which one is it? It is. Uh, there we go, delete. That's F5 normally. And so we can just add that same label. We can copy the label here. This is copy. Copy this label down to here. Oops. Move that label on top of it. And then we can do the same thing here. We can just delete this, just to, like I said, just to clean things up, really. So we can just call this one, we can just name it discharge, right? And label, DIS. There we go. And then copy this one to here. Okay, and what is left? Uh, threshold is pin six, needs to go over here. So we'll just call this trigger, T-R-I-G, there we go. We'll just put one here as well. And then draw a line to it. And again, this is just net naming, very similar to KiCad where it's just, you know, as long as it has the same name, it's going to have the same, uh, it's going to, the computer will consider it connected. Now, one thing we also have to do that I started to talk about, I see it turned sideways there. Uh, we I started to talk about, we actually need to not only give values here, right? Like this needs to be 1K, but we also need to pick components uh, for, so this is already combined, this is already a set component. We do need to do the same thing for an LED here. So I just right click, pick new diode, and you see there's a range of diodes. It treats di LEDs and diodes the same. Uh, we can just, uh, call it that, we could just call it a diode, but really there's an LED. So we'll just use an LED there. And what it's doing is basically just telling the computer what kind of parameters it needs to have. Now, this is a very, very advanced topic. You don't need to know that. Uh, let's just make sure we pick an LED with the proper drop. We don't need a ton of current, so we'll just do that one. Perfect. Uh, how about Fairchild? There we go. Okay, so QTLP 690C. For this, now there are a lot of parts in there. We just need a generic one, whatever. Well, almost any LED should work, but you can get very specific there. We, we don't need to. All right, now we need to set the voltage here, right? So we're just gonna set this to nine volts. 
right? And let's see. So we got five, 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 yada, yada, yada. Good. Now I'm going to hit run, and then it's going to pull up another dialog to basically tell us to ask us how we want this to start and stop. So we're going to say stop time, uh, one second. If we wanted one uh, millisecond, it would be one m, right? So one second time to start saving data. We want zero, and maximum time step I'm going to leave open there. You see that this actually put uh, the spice directive down here. And this is getting kind of deep here, but now the idea is okay. So that actually already ran. What we can do now is actually monitor voltages. And you see, if you mouse over, you can see the various voltages throughout the circuit. You see that voltage is 9 volts. From 0 seconds to 1 second, that voltage is 9 volts. Now what we want to see, though, is let's see what the output actually is. We want to see, is there actually a voltage and, uh, ab uh, across the LED, and is there current going through the LED? So there is a current. There is a voltage across the LED. There is a current going through it. You see, so we actually are lighting up this LED here. Let's try running the simulation for a little bit longer. I just right click there. I'm going to change this to 10 seconds instead of 1. All right, hit run again. And you see that we actually do have uh, high and low signals, right? So this is flashing roughly every uh, 10 sec or sorry, half second or so, a little bit less than every half second. So basically, when it's high here, that means it's on. Or you can see there's 7.2 milliamps flowing through the LED, which means that it's actually lit up. And then there's a, a short period where it's off. If we want to see the other signals we have here, right, we can just monitor this. So this is actually what the voltage that, you're, that the, the 555 timer is seeing here. Now, one thing to note is that we, I'm going to switch back here, we did not actually use a 555 timer. We actually are using a 7555. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to work in the simulation here, but the main thing and the reason we're doing it is because we wanted to use a CR2032 battery, which is only 3 volts instead of 9 volts. Now, I'm predicting that this is not going to work at 3 volts if I just change the voltage, but let's try it out. That's the great thing about SPICE. You can just go try it out. Let's do that. All right, so back here, I'm going to right click on this thing. Let me make this whole thing large again. Oops. And let's just. Spread the windows out there. All right, so I'm going to right click on the voltage source, change that to 3 volts, and then just hit run again. So now we see 3 volts here. And the real question, like I said, is the real thing that we're testing is is there current going through the LED? And it appears that there is. Now, this is one area where an actual 555 timer will not work with 3 volts, but because there's rules defining how this thing works internally in a simulation, it might be saying, well, it's close enough, and we'll just do the math to make it uh, change there. Uh, but it looks like it's relatively the same. Now, you see that the timing is a little bit different as well. You see these kind of spikes. That's actually because of uh, current shoot through on that LED. But so what we're seeing, though, is a very similar kind of situation here where it's turning on and off. And it appears that these values are what we want. And you see that this discharge is basically, uh, this is going back to pin 7. right? That's the white. You see it says V discharge here. We can right click on that and change the name or the color, whatever we want to change there. Uh, and so what we're doing, though, is we're basically uh, we're taking voltage, 3 volts at the top here. right? It's going down through this uh, four, 471K. right? These are in series, so you add them together. So 471 kilo ohms of resistance, charging up this capacitor slowly, and then when it gets to a certain, uh, when it gets to that certain height there, then it it triggers the 555 timer, and then it switches to the other direction, and that ultimately controls the output. So uh, this is, it appears that this is a good, uh, this is going to be a half second flasher. Now, what we can do here as well is we can play around with some of these values, right? So if we wanted to change this to 10K, let's see how that would change things, right? So right now we're at about a half second on off cycle. So we hit run again. That didn't really change it too much. What if we change the capacitor here, right? Let's make that from 1 microfarad to 10 microfarad. I predict that's actually going to make this a longer, uh, that each flash will turn on and off slower. Let's see how that does. Yeah, look at that. So that's once every five seconds now. So it waits five seconds, turns on, and then it turns off very slowly. Same thing if we wanted to make it go slower, right? we can make this 0.1 microfarads. We should see it flash even more. right? So now we see lots and lots and lots of flashing, almost 
to the point where, let's see, if we zoom in here, right, we can just click and drag to zoom in. So now it's flashing roughly every 100 milliseconds or so. It's almost too fast to be seeing how fast it's going. Now we can, we can change either the R or the C. The C is going to have a little bit more direct effect here, but we can also, we can try and make this maybe 10 times smaller. What happens there? That makes it go even faster, which means if we go in the other direction, oh, see that's still running, that's 10 seconds. So now if we go in the other direction, right? So now if we make this not 470K, let's make it 4.7 meg. Like I said before, you have to type out meg. And now let's run it. Now we're back to that same thing. So there's really a relationship between higher resistance and a higher uh, capacitance will make the whole thing go slower, right? If we put this back to uh, one microfarad, you can add the F if you want to, you don't have to. This should go really slow, right? So now we're going really slow again. Great, so what did we learn here? <laughs> First off, hopefully we looked at, hopefully you learned a little bit of how to actually put together a simple SPICE simulation. Um, SPICE on its own can be used in a simple way like this. It can go, I know that the uh, people that are designing the chips actually, the LT chips use this same, the exact same software, so it can get very, very advanced. Now, it doesn't have to, and I, you know, it's going to start slow, but this is a very powerful piece of software that you can use to simulate your circuits. Again, I want to call out, don't get too dependent. Don't think this is going to solve all your problems. It's great for these kind of quick change around values, see if uh, you know, things go faster or slower. But as your systems get more and more complex, the, uh, the amount of things you have to be careful of in the actual simulation kind of grows exponentially. It, it becomes very complicated very quickly. So you always want to keep your simulations very constrained and simple. This is actually a very good early uh, simulation to be doing here. You can play with values. You can try different things. You can even hook up different things on the output. Also, it's good, you know, the 555 timer, one of the best parts about that chip is it's low cost. It's easy to use. Uh, you should be doing this in hardware as well. And we'll be doing that soon. So we played with some values. We're going to keep the values that we had originally. And we're going to go and order some parts. And then we'll go and assemble. And then we'll test it out. So if you have any questions, you can ask down in the YouTube comments below. Uh, this is part of the Getting the Blinky 4.0 series. Like I said, this is a new video, but I'm really excited to be trying out new things and to be showing off KiCad and how to build some simple circuits. Thanks for watching.